Hello to all of our friends and family out there with the Mississippi Pawn Brokers Association. This is Jerry Whitehead with the Pawn Shop Consulting Group. And I'm here today to deliver a presentation uh, on the various principles and purposes uh, behind having valuations prepared for your business. There are a wide range of reasons to have formal valuations prepared for your business, and today I'm going to discuss uh, many of those uh, in depth. Some of those would include the following. Estate planning, which is very important for any business, business owner. Retirement planning certainly can be important depending on individual purpose and long-term goal. Uh, succession planning is also an extremely important aspect of your business and also having valuations compiled for them. Uh, partnership dissolutions, uh, divorces uh, can be important, obviously. Having fair market values established for your business for either enhancing banking, uh, banking relationships or establishing lines of credit or other for your business. Determining what the potential fair market value of my business is for potentially selling the business is also uh, one of the most common purposes for having valuations done. In the case of estate planning, uh, I've worked with a lot of clients over the years that have waited till after a significant event has happened. Uh, my only advice to any of you that are participating uh, in this presentation uh, is that you should consider always having a good, concise, detailed estate planning already compiled in the unlikely event something happens to you, your loved ones, or somebody working within your operations. Sudden death in the family, owner, operator, management, managers, or others, life does happen and we should be prepared at all times for the unknown. Planning for the unexpected events are always the best course and is some of the best advice that I can offer any of you as an industry consultant. Uh, certainly dealing with probate or family members and others without a clearly defined path of what the founders or the owners you know wishes may or may have been uh, because it can be disastrous from my experience if you don't have a clear path uh, developed, designed, or in place before some unlikely event. Uh, clear planning for tax preparation and or consequences are also extremely important and they're very personal for me. Uh, in my case, uh, my father uh, died very unexpectedly uh, some 20 plus years ago and we did not have all of our estate planning uh, completed or in place and uh, it was very arduous uh, for my family and I to contend with all the moving components that were dumped on us all at one time. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the purposes of really good estate planning are really uh, preservation of the assets and or the business, uh, which should be the key goal here if there is uh, some path post uh, some unlikely event that may have happened. Retirement planning is also very important. Trying to preserve the life cycle of the potential income stream certainly is a good goal to strive for. Uh, if you develop really good management teams or you have family members or others that can keep the business moving forward in an ongoing basis, uh, atypically is most ideal in my opinion. Uh, autopilot with remote to no hands on the operations uh, depended upon how successful the management teams and systems could be, with good checks and balances uh, is also a great place to be. If you've got your business uh, basically self-running uh, with very little to no hands-on and it's generating an income or revenue stream for you or whoever you've designated, uh, certainly a great place to be. Uh, ownership distributions with key partners who are involved in ongoing aspects of keeping an operation alive and moving forward uh, are also great incentives and great ways to uh, keep your mm, partners or key partners or others who may be involved in the daily aspects of the operations in place 
happy and honest, so to speak. <clears throat> as far as the owner operators are uh, concerned, having planned continuous uh, either equity distributions, monthly, quarterly, annually, or other, where a continuous revenue stream could be generated from the business in an ongoing business is a very ideal place to be. Uh, succession planning is also very important. Uh, having clearly defined goals of who and what is in line for the succession of the business is very important. Uh, you must have a clearly defined path and do not expect that your heirs or survivors can or will figure it out. This needs to be done ahead of time as much as possible. Uh, too many businesses will fail within the first succession of the business because primarily lack of planning and not having clearly defined actions during the planning stages for the succession, whether it was planned or not. Uh, having clearly defined will and good estate planning, also extremely important in these areas. Uh, having lawyers and tax lawyers and accountants who are specialists in these areas are highly recommended for a variety of reasons. Have your desires clearly defined for the unlikely event such as death or other for your heirs. Uh, I do recommend that um, having a good life insurance program in place that could assist with the tax consequences to your surviving heirs uh, to help ensure that they can maintain your life's work or other and don't potentially lose it uh, because they're unable to meet the tax obligations for a, either not having good tax planning in place or many other reasons when you get down to it. Good, solid insurance programs that pay upon uh, a founder, founding member's death or other to help the surviving heirs are very important and they can certainly help ensure the survivability of the business and uh, increases the chances that the heirs uh, will continue on for hopefully a you know a lifelong run with the business. Uh, in the case of partnership dissolutions, uh, I've worked with a lot of clients over the years that had to endure uh, partner dissolutions uh, for many reasons. Uh, sometimes it's just basically an inability to continue to work together. Uh, we may have partners or family members that are relocating for personal or other reasons. Uh, partners may have different business outlooks or value systems that can become incompatible in a closely held business over time. People just start to have different opinions and they may grow apart versus growing together is more often not what I see in cases where we're dealing with partnership dissolutions. Uh, financing partners uh, oftentimes may be desiring an exit from the business with whatever their share of the equity or the potential income or what the buyout may look like uh, for their pair, uh, for their involvement in the business and what may be fair and equitable to, uh, you know, to take them out. Oftentimes partners can be spouses. Uh, divorces have a way of changing things dramatically in relationships, obviously, especially when money or businesses or other assets are involved uh, can play a big role. In the case of divorce, uh, I've worked with a number of clients over the years that had to endure divorces. Uh, it's not an easy thing to go through for most anyone. And if you're divorcing from a significant other who oftentimes uh, your spouse uh, may or may not have been involved in the business. Divorces can be ugly if they are hostile, and the value propositions can vary widely between opposing parties. If divorces are deemed possible or is going to be the end road, uh, another very important reason to have up-to-date financials with full disclosure on all income, expenses, or other is a must. There should not be any mystery or perception of mystery of income, money, or assets, in my opinion. Spouses that are partners in businesses, either by being operationally involved or silent, or could be an equity holder, can pose significant challenges for those who may be unprepared in the event or unlikely event that uh, they may have to go through a divorce. Attempting to defraud a court or a spouse 
can have serious consequences. It is my advice to be upfront, be courteous, be equitable. If it took two of you to do it, be fair and honest is my best advice. Uh, fair market values for banking relationships. Uh, having solid financials are going to always be important. Uh, keeping your corporate balance sheets up to date and accurate, which are really just a compilation of all of your assets, whether it be loans and inventory, paid in capital, cars, money in the bank, savings account, etc. Keeping profit and loss statements up to date and accurate uh, are also very important. Uh, keeping your annual tax filings up to date and taxed or taxes paid up uh, always going to be uh, very good. <clears throat> Inventory your assets frequently, and by inventory I do mean front and back. Uh, conducting frequent inventories of your store's assets are very, very important for a variety of reasons. Uh, checks and balances to keep people honest, and also to help ensure the integrity of the assets that you have and what type of income that we're producing off of them. Loans, for example, in the back room, inventories in the front room. Uh, tie your store systems out as best you can to resemble all the financial data that may be illustrated either through your income statements, profit and loss, tax returns, or other. Uh, we are big fans of technology and utilization of good technology systems uh, are certainly there to help provide real-time data and analysis. And in most cases, it can do so quite easily and quickly. Very important. Technology integration certainly can play a major role in keeping your business buttoned up at all times. Uh, one of my common sayings out here, information is key and is very important. Certainly, if you have a line of credit established against hard assets of your business, uh, more likely than not, financial institutions are going to be requiring up-to-date, timely information. could be weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually and or banks can come in with the drop of a hat and just decide to do an asset check and, and determine you know how well are their assets being uh, maintained that they may have a secured interest in. Uh, if you are considering selling your business, determining what a fair market value of your business is is very important. Knowing what your business is worth at all times in my humble opinion as a consultant and evaluation expert is gold. Having up-to-date valuations are important for all the reasons previously discussed, but particularly this one. When will I know when it's time to sell? Well, I can tell you, you may not know, and it may just drop in your lap. Uh, in my case, my family and I had built a 12-store chain up uh, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, we were attempting to take our company public uh, we almost merged with one of the public companies back in 1991. And then in 1992, one of the other public companies came along, got wind of what we were up to. And in our case, because we uh, had some significant market presence in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, we commanded one of the highest multiples that was ever paid in history for an acquisition by that company, the public company that acquired us. Uh, because we were really running a tight operation, and even though it might not have been the right time to sell, I can say that the amount of money that was involved in that was certainly right, and it was right for our family at that moment in time. Is there a market for my business? Uh, markets uh, and market windows can open and close. Um, there are lots of reasons for why some group may or may not want to acquire uh, a upon operation in a particular market. Uh, some markets are not opportune because if it's a public company, for example, typically they like to have economies of scale of management and it's challenging for them to manage one-off stores versus having clusters of stores because they do require management, oversight, auditing, control, and all the other types of support uh, that makes the stores operate legally and proficiently. Who would potentially buy my business? 
Uh, again, that can vary depending on the market, the operator, and what type of business that you know you may have or uh, may exist. Uh, as said, there are public entities that are out there that are buying stores. Uh, First Cash today has close to 3,000 stores between North and South America. They're approaching a $5 billion company with about 15,000 employees, and the bulk of their growth historically, uh, as are the other publicly traded companies, were primarily through acquisition. There are a couple of pretty well-funded private groups that are out there buying up stores and or there may be other independent operators within your market area or your state that might be opportunities to uh, either sell your business to or potentially have a desire to come and buy your business. Private companies versus public companies. Uh, having done a lot of transactions, I have bought and sold more than 250 stores in the last 30 plus years. Uh, I can tell you that it can be very arduous depending on the magnitude of the transaction and or if it's a private or a publicly traded company. In the case of public companies, uh, they can at times seemingly wear an independent out with data requests, mission requests, and legalese documentation. Uh, if we're in the ballpark uh, in valuation ranges, typically those relationships would begin with what we call an LOI or a letter of intent, which at which time would be followed with an asset purchase agreement. Asset purchase agreements can be extremely arduous. Uh, atypically, the terms of the deal are all spelled out in there along with a lot of other legalese. We do recommend that our independents uh, who are going through these processes do retain good legal counsel to make sure that all interests are being adhered to once the documentation flow uh, starts. In the case of the private companies, uh, if they're one of the larger groups that might have Wall Street type money behind them, they can operate uh, asimilarly to the public companies. Some of the smaller ones might not be quite so arduous. Uh, however, a fair amount of due diligence is required in any transaction, small or large, whether it's a private or a public company, atypically. Uh, having professional expertise and representatives uh, coming from my perspective uh, are highly recommended. Uh, if you're going down this path to make sure that all interests are being looked at and consultants such as myself who've been through uh, lots of transactional deals when it relates to the buying and selling of pawn shop operations uh, with private and public companies uh, can certainly help uh, maneuver that landscape which can be very treacherous if you've never been down that path before. Remember, you only get to sell your operation one time in theory. Consultants can certainly help structure deals to mitigate income taxes, maximize the potential payout structure, uh, and or what I like to refer to as the art of the deal. There's a variety of ways to structure deals to help mitigate taxes and again uh, potentially increase uh, the potential value yield for the clients uh, that we may have the opportunity to represent. Uh, typically, the fees that would be associated with these types of deals are far outweighed by the many benefits of just having a good, solid, experienced professional uh, hand-walking uh, you and your opportunity through this entire process. Uh, if you are considering an exit, uh, here are some steps to consider if that is the goal. Preparation is certainly key for a potentially successful transaction. Uh, oftentimes, and on behalf of myself and my company, Pawn Shop Consulting Group, uh, when I start the due diligence process, uh, many times we do find that there is low-lying fruit on many of the deals that we examine. And as such, I do attempt to uh, consult our clients on how to maximize the potential value of their opportunity. Obviously, if we're allowed the representation opportunity, uh, we want to maximize the potential sale of the business for all parties concerned. Some of those can include uh, looking at the performance of your loan assets. You know, are we doing max loans? Meaning, is our loan-to-value ratios potentially uh, on the upper end of the strata? Do we keep our pools up to date? 
Are our loan yields uh, clean, and do they closely represent what a state uh, that you may be in are yielding on average or better? And we do need to have clean loan balances. Uh, if we have preparation time, then sometimes we can also uh, work to enhance the value of the business if we had some time to work with it to help reinforce the efficiency, proficiency, and even perhaps the value of the assets, which are your loans and your inventory. Uh, certainly enhancing the performance of the inventory is very important as well. Uh, we find that many of us uh, operating in this industry today uh, carry a lot of precarious inventory scenarios. Uh, aging inventory is a problem for many operators here in the United States. Uh, you do need to be focused on turning the inventory uh, than being focused more on uh, inventory margins as an example. Yields are more important. And typically, there are still three types of categories when it comes to pawnbrokers operating. Collectors, retailers, and hoarders. Which one are you? Uh, analyzing profit loss statements uh, is also very important. In my case, uh, oftentimes, uh, when we're going through the detailed expense ledgers for any particular candidate, uh, we try to go through there and scrub either owner-related or non-recurring expenses out of those P&Ls to attempt to uh, maximize what the earned income of the uh, opportunity may look like, or what we call EBITDA. The importance of store systems or technology uh, being up to date uh, also very important, and if those systems do tie out to your profit and loss statements, tax returns, and or any other uh, financial data or representations either constructed or going to be constructed uh, for any potential uh, exit strategy. Uh, preparing the operations to transition. Uh, certainly uh, having a good feel for uh, auditing uh, and or removing of what I'll call personal items, inventorying them and other can be very important. In some cases, some of our uh, sale candidates may have a lot of personal assets that are store memorabilia and or store fixtures in some cases. And if the operation is going to be leased by an acquiring party, uh, very important to have a good detailed list of what that equipment is or artifacts or whatever, and that those are signed off on before the keys are traded off. It's very important. Uh, personnel may survive during a uh, transition. Uh, we recommend that they're clean, sharp, professional, responsible. Uh, in some cases, many eyes or different layers of management will be on them, both pre and post uh, transition of selling a business. Uh, it's been my experience that in many of the acquisitions we've been involved in, that team members that can perform well and work well either in a larger company setting or other, will have opportunity during a transition of a business uh, being acquired. Clean and mean is the order of the day. Enhancing the performance of the assets. Uh, once again, uh, there are times that in many of the transactions I've been involved in, we did notice there were areas that we could focus on to potentially enhance the value of their opportunity. Other considerations for performance enhancement could include, and we did talk about performance of the loan assets, keeping your pools up to date, more importantly, keeping the default or forfeiture rate trends at an optimal spot, always trying to increase the loan yields and or increasing the return on the loan assets in general. On the inventory side, uh, carefully analyzing what may be in the operation, specifically targeting aging inventory, uh, get focused on moving out slow moving to no moving inventory, keep it fresh. Margin's not necessarily important, but it's more important to have what I'll call a higher turning product, which is most ideal in this regard when we're assessing how to maximize the potential of what our inventories may be doing. Uh, on the metric side or the KPIs, key performance indicators, 
uh, maximizing revenue streams uh, and revenue income, very important. And more importantly, you know, overall net income. You know, what kind of net income do I generate on my revenues or what that percentage is, is certainly a KPI that is uh, close attention is paid to. Uh, also, the uh, operating net income return on my assets. What that percentage looks like at the end of the day, end of the year, etc. And my assets are my loans and my inventory. And we need to constantly find ways to enhance the EBITDA. Uh, EBITDA uh, translation is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Stores are typically traded on multiples of EBITDA in most cases, uh, but in some cases, stores have been traded on either multiples of loan balances and or uh, inventory prices can be negotiated uh, depending on the fabric or the makeup of the inventory in general. Typically, the inventory is not acquired at a premium unless there's some exception to it, like it's a lot of jewelry, uh, or potential high margin inventory, but more often than not, it's not necessarily uh, considered a, a part of a major acquisition. Uh, acquiring groups are really wanting to buy customer history, loan book, loan portfolios, and loan customers. How can we make more money? Well, increasing the loan yields is one of the ways to aid enhancing income for you, your store, your operation, uh, but in theory would also enhance the potential value. Uh, there are steps to take to increase the loan yields, and here are some suggestions. Uh, always pushing the renewals. A lot of the financial analysis that we do on an ongoing basis looks at how much renewal service charge we may generate each month as compared to uh, just service charges relating to loan redemptions, as an example. Uh, we do recommend call lists and text messaging as ways to, A, either reduce forfeitures, increase redemptions, and more often than not, increases PSC, pawn service charges, and in theory, loan yields. Uh, mobile pay options and conveniences are very important. People are adapting to technology in droves. This is the, you know, Google generation, and uh, more people have access to the Internet than they do water on planet Earth today. Uh, some states require mail-outs. Some states that don't require that, we do have clients that do mail-outs anyway as a convenience to the customers. Uh, opportunities to bump loans at any chance that you can, very important. Loan bumps are just places that you can increase loan-to-value ratios based on a variety of reasons for well-qualified customers. Qualifying really has to do with what a customer needs are. Do they have an emotional connection to whatever the goods or products may be? What kind of history do they have in our systems? And how do we assess their ability to repay? Ideally, if they qualify very well, uh, most of our client groups lend anywhere from 60 to 80% of the perceived value they could liquidate the items for in the unlikely event they may have to sell it. Qualifying, 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 extremely important. Other ways that we can make money and enhance the value of our deal, obviously, is increasing inventory yields. The inventory yield is one of the least uh, understood uh, key performance indicator in this industry on a worldwide basis. Um, so many of us fell prey to the margin syndrome. Well, I loaned a dollar on it, I got to sell it for two dollars. We get all fixated on margins. My common response to that is if somebody made a mistake and loaned $1,000 on a Tomex watch worth $20, the watch is still worth $20. Whatever the amount of money that is in an item doesn't necessarily reflect on what an item is worth. The items have to be sold at fair market value in whatever market that you may be in. Inventory yields are a combination of inventory turns times margins. And uh, we're more concerned about the yield of the inventory, how many times we turn our inventory in whatever time period that we may be examining to help enhance the yields in an ongoing basis. 
ways that we can increase the yields in most cases or in many cases we do see that lots of operators have too much inventory in the ideal world if you have a near optimized loan balance and you're in a high yield state where we can charge 20 to 25 percent per month and you're primarily dealing in general merchandise uh, ideally, we like to see the inventory levels around 60 to 70 percent at cost uh, to whatever your loan balance is. Translation is you should always be able to turn your inventory to rate faster than you're accumulating it is the theorem behind that. And more often, we see inventory turns increased. We're not focused on margins, but we're seeing inventory yields go up as a result, which means we're making more profit by moving more inventory at a lower margin. Uh, inventory can be categorized into three generic descriptions. Uh, premium is the hard to get, hard to keep. Uh, this type of product, if it does default, we recommend pricing it what it's worth. Uh, we like to let it have some shelf life. People can see it. Uh, typically, this is less than 5% of the inventory in any particular pawn shop. And after 60, maybe 90 days, price it down and move it along accordingly. The generic everywhere, everyday product, it's pretty much open season on that stuff. Flat panel TVs, laptops, pads, tools boxes, whatever that may be. Price it to sell it and get rid of it. Uh, one of the theorems that we've really been pushing over the last 25 years is uh, just put what you, uh, price it to sell it when it hits the shelf. Uh, since a lot of my history comes out of multi-store operations, trying to teach uh, your underlings how to high price, low price, negotiate, meet me in the middle price, just put a number on it, sell it, be happy, and go on down the road. Uh, my common reference is if I've got $100 bills on the wall priced $89, they're going to sell themselves. People are going to ask you what's wrong with that. I'll take it. If your overall inventory strategies reflect that kind of pricing strategy, you'll find that your inventory sells itself. Uh, obsolete inventory is the aging, broken, outdated, or oftentimes referred to as the funky funk. Bowling balls and things of that nature. Uh, that type of product has a way of duplicating itself the longer it sits on the shelf. It is open season on that stuff. We recommend donating it, giving it away, charging it off, setting it on fire, or throwing it away. Uh, keep that stuff moving. You don't want that type of product in your store. Again, it has a way of duplicating itself the longer that it sets around there. Uh, obviously, managing the expense lines in your operations are also important, particularly if you're going down the road of potentially selling your business. Uh, controlling your expenses uh, as best you can at the store levels are important. And the basics are just don't be wasteful with supplies or utilities. Uh, conserve things. Don't be wasteful in any manner as best you can. Uh, controlling labor costs uh, can be very important. Oftentimes we fire, uh, find we can have more bodies and pay less overtime just by having more people on hand. And the advantage of that is you've always got somebody in there in case somebody falls out, gets sick, has car wreck, or other. And finding ways to cut costs under your control at all times are extremely important. All that does get to your bottom line one way or another. And in the case of the exit strategies, remember, we're looking to try to enhance our bottom lines and improve the return on our assets as much as we possibly can. Uh, on behalf of the Pawn Shop Consulting Group, uh, thank you for your participation uh, in this presentation. Uh, if any of you have any additional questions or needs, uh, you can certainly uh, reach out to me directly. Uh, some of the contact information here is to follow. Uh, we do have one simple request. Please leave us a review at Review Pawn Shop Consulting. All love is certainly appreciated. You can certainly follow us on our Facebook page, uh, Pawn Shop Consulting Group. Uh, you can also go to our website address uh, where you can subscribe to our newsletters or blogs and you can stay up to date on the content that we generate quite frequently. Uh, there will be a, uh, an examination and a test prepared that will be outside of this presentation. 
that will be presented uh, by the Mississippi Palm Brook Association. And uh, once again, I appreciate all of you for your participation. Uh, you can also email me directly at jerry at pawnshopconsultinggroup.com. Um, and we appreciate the uh, opportunity to present. And we hope that we uh, can deliver some additional content to uh, all of the members of the Mississippi Palm Brook Association. Uh, big shout out to Nick Fulton and the many others uh, who are involved with the uh, Mississippi Palm Brook Association. Uh, this online training portal uh, is the first of its kind in the United States. It's a huge step. And uh, again, uh, Pawn Shop Consulting Group is proud to uh, participate. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing and hearing from all of you uh, soon. Thank you.